everyone. I'm Garrett Tesla, founder of The Squad Room, where we help you transform your leadership, create more resilience, and generate more balance in your life. I started The Squad Room because I was searching for those answers for myself. And as I dug deep into personal development and dealing with the stress of my job as a cop, I quickly realized that I was not alone. So The Squad Room is here to help you become the person you want to be. And we give you access to some of the best experts in the world to help you do that. If you're new to the show, thanks for being here. And don't forget to follow or subscribe to the show so that you don't miss any of this valuable information that literally could change your life. We all need coaches and mentors in our lives, and we have literally hundreds of hours of free content on this show and at thesquadroom.net on growing your leadership, raising your emotional awareness, mastering stress, arresting anger, and creating more balance in your life. Now, let's get to today's episode so you can implement some of these lessons into your life. And trust me, many of these lessons are hard won. There are blood, sweat, and probably a few tears behind what we share on this show. But the whole point is to help you navigate these tough careers during these incredibly challenging times. So listen closely and maybe even take a couple notes so that you can execute on some of the lessons you learned today. I also challenge you to share this message with friends who are committed to personal development like you. It's important that all of us spread some positivity in these difficult times. It's the responsibility of each of us to lead where we can and you can do that right now by taking these lessons and sharing them with others. Also, make sure to DM me or tag me on Instagram at The Squad Room so I can cheer you on or answer questions. And I'd love it if you wanted to reach out by email to me. It's Garrett at the squadroom.net. Thanks for listening. Now let's begin. All right, today we're going to talk about uh, a topic that probably doesn't get a lot of attention, but I'm going to give you eight healthy ways to detach from work after your shift. Now, why are we detaching in the first place? What, am I, what do I mean by that, right? We, we, we detach. Detachment is sometimes a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. We want to, in this context, talk about detaching from work, leaving work at work so that when we get home to our families and to our loved ones, our friends, that we can be present with them and that we are not wrapped around the axle of what happened during the day. And that is hard sometimes. That is very, very hard sometimes, especially on a day where you deal with a critical incident. But... This is a habit that I highly encourage you to focus on or take one or two of these at least or a couple of these or try something for yourself and create a ritual that when you leave work that you are intentionally trying to leave work at work. And I know that that's hard with call outs or if you're on a on call assignment or those sorts of things, but you can still do some of these things to create some distance and, and create some a gap between you know when you leave work and when you end up at home, regardless of how long your commute is. Some guys enjoy a long commute because they get a chance to, you know, break up the day and, and kind of uh, ruminate for a little bit. I, for most of my career, have had a very short commute. And for a long time in my career, found myself leaving work kind of spun up from the adrenaline of the day. And especially when my kids were really young, like being walking through my front door, not five, 10 minutes later. And still having the tension of the day in me when my kids are climbing on me, they want to play, or maybe they're misbehaving, and my wife's, you know, headed up to here with them and me, and uh, I bring that energy to a toddler or to a young kid, you know, and uh, had to work hard to find a different way to to shift that energy because I guarantee your toddler is not going to appreciate if you bring home a day of tension and adrenaline and anxiety and, you know, the ups and downs of the job. So we want to detach from work so that we can reattach to our family. That's an important thing. We can't, can't take this as detach from work so that we get to go home and then detach from everything else because that's where the real problems start. But understand that why, why we're detaching in the first place. We're detaching to manage the stress, manage anxiety, or even trauma but, it, but when we do it subconsciously or we do it with the people that we care about, we're doing it, uh, it's very short-lived, and it really just creates more stress and more trauma at home. So we don't want to detach from our family. We want to engage with our family, but we can't engage with our family until we have detached from work. We can't be mentally at both places at the same time. So I'm going to give you eight ideas. You can do some of them. You can do all of them. You can throw them all out. I don't know, but some of them uh, work for me. Some of them I ask some friends. And I created this list out of that, all right? The first one is to do five box breaths when you get in your car. So uh, even before you leave the station, you're dressed out. I hope you're dressed out. I hope you don't go home in uniform, but whatever. Uh, and some of you had take-home cars, I know. Uh, 
But, you know, before you leave the station, uh, sit in your car and take a minute to do five box breath, box breaths. And I'll explain what those are. But what this does for you is a couple different things. One is it activates your parasympathetic nervous system. That's the, that's the, uh, the system that is the brake pedal for our sympathetic nervous system. We use our sympathetic nervous system all day long at work. That's our fight or flight. And we're engaged in that hypervigilance and hyper awareness as we're looking for crooks and we're doing the car stops or we're running code. We engage our, par- our sympathetic nervous system all day at work. So to re-engage with our family, we need to engage, we need to calm down and we need to engage our parasympathetic nervous system. We need to get those good hormones flowing in us again. And one of the greatest ways to do that is simply through breath and focusing on your breath and oxygenating your body. So a box breath, many of you know what it is, but it's very simple. You use a count of four and you start and you inhale for a count of four and then you hold it for a count of four and then you breathe out, you exhale for a count of four. And at the bottom of the breath, before inhaling again, you hold it again for a count of four. And you think of your breath not as an up and down, but as a box, four, 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 four. And when you do that, just for as, as short as five rotations of that, or five cycles of that, your brain will activate those parasympathetic nervous system, nervous system hormones that we need to get ourselves calm down. We, we lower our heart rate, we lower our b- blood pressure, we oxygenate our brain and our blood, and we, it, it's one of the easiest ways to calm down. So I like to do that in the car before I leave as like my first step, right? Because the minute I get out on the road and I'm dealing with Southern California traffic, I guarantee something is going to hijack my attempt to, to be calm. So I try to enter, <laughs> re-enter the world, re-enter the civilian world, calm already, And that's one of the greatest things you can do. Five box breaths right there in the parking lot before you leave. All right. Another thing. It's a question to ask yourself. And you can do this, uh, you know, very um, intently, as I sometimes do. Or you can just have this be part of your routine. Or you try to use this question to catch yourself when you know that you're kind of uh, wrapped around the axle on something. But the question is, do I want to take this job home to my family? It's just that. It's very simple. Do I want to take the job? Do I want to take the stress? Do I want to take the uh, nonsense? Do I want to take the drama? Do I want to take the trauma home to my family? Now, obviously, I hope, none of you are going to answer, yes, yes, I want to take this home to my family. That's absurd. So when we say no, when we can, we can, when we can actually articulate to ourselves, no, I don't want to take this home with, to my family, we're able to stop ourselves much faster and much, uh, much more effectively because we have made this decision in our minds that we are not going to drag our family into this. We're not going to drag all this baggage home with us and unpack it right there on the living room floor surrounded by our wife and kids or our husband and kids or whatever uh, domestic situation you've got, right? When we say those things out loud or when we actually answer that question, we put that into our awareness front and center and we can be conscious of it when we do come home because there will be days you come home and you... Don't realize that you brought that baggage right along with you in the living room. And when you have trained to think about this question, you're able to catch yourself in that moment much faster. So ask yourself, do I want to take the job home to my family? All right. Next thing is just to create some boundaries uh, between the job and home. For me, a big one is uh, changing at the station. When I'm in a uniform assignment, I want to be... Uh, back to civilian uh, clothing as fast as possible. I want to leave my uniform at work. And I know that some people have take-home cars, but what I would suggest is immediately change out of your gear and keep your gear out of sight. You know, keep it in a, a portion of your closet or if you get changed in the garage or whatever it is, but walk, get home, change out of that gear as fast as possible and don't return to it till you need to. You know, don't eat dinner in it, don't lounge around in it. First of all, God knows what you came across that day, but just don't have those reminders that you are that job because you're not that job. It's a job, you know, and I'll add that in, that includes the white t-shirt, <laughs> the quote unquote off duty cop look of the BDUs and the white t-shirt. Take a couple minutes to just pack an extra t-shirt and pack some jeans and some flip flops 
and just getting out of the role as fast as you can will help you reintegrate when you get home. So for me, I get I change at the station, and it's great. Uh, and uh, and I I have never deviated that from that in my career. I I think once I wore boots and and stuff home because I was doing an overtime assignment, and I felt completely awkward uh, being out in that. All right, next one. Uh, so number f- so number one was to take five box press before you get in your car. Number two was to ask yourself, do I want to take this job home to my family? Number three was to change at the station if you can or change as soon as you get home. So number four is on the drive, turn off the scanners or the radio traffic and listen to something else. Listen to music. Listen to this podcast. Listen to a podcast that doesn't have anything to do with policing. And again, if you have a take-home car, I know, like a marked car, I know that's uh, more challenging for you, but turn that stuff off, you know, make a decision to focus your efforts on something else or focus your mind on something else. Learn something new. Enjoy a song. Music is one of the best things you can do to uh, induce the production of uh, serotonin and dopamine and all these good chemicals that make you feel good. There's a reason people love music. And so just utilize that. Listen to music. Don't listen to talk radio. That's going to get you spun up. Don't listen to whatever angry talking head is out there about why the world's ending. We don't need that as we come from a job where we see it on a daily basis and come back to our family. So on the drive home, turn off the scanners and the radio. When you get home, before you get in the house, you park the car, you're in the garage or you're in the driveway and a world awaits you inside, do another five box press. It doesn't take you more than 30 seconds. No one's going to notice you're out there. And just take a couple more seconds to reset And make sure that when you enter through the threshold of that door that you are showing up in the way that you want to be for your family. And and those box press when you get home, create a nice bookend. You know, you you leave work and you do them and it sets a tone for the drive. And when you get home, you remind yourself again, you kind of check in with yourself again that you don't want to bring those things in with you. So you you, you do the breaths and then you walk through that door nice and calm. And that's number five. Number six is to ask yourself another simple question, right? When you get home, um, ask yourself, who do I want to be when I walk through that door? Who do I want to be when I walk through that door? You already asked yourself, do I want to bring the job home with me? Like, no. Okay, so we know that. You don't want to be the cop when you walk through the door, but who do you want to be? Do you want to be an engaged dad? Do you want to be uh, a a concerned uh, or loving husband or wife? Do you want to be someone who they look forward to seeing? Or do you want to be a grumpy grouch that they're scared of? Do you want to mumble your way through greetings and retreat and miss an opportunity to create a relationship with your family, your kids? Now, no one really wants to do those things, on the surface anyway, right? But we do them repeatedly. And we make up an excuse. Oh, I'm too tired tonight. Or I know I did this for a long time. Like I was, I was like, I would crash on the couch and not get up uh, until bedtime. And I didn't want to make any decisions, you know, and I didn't want to engage. And I had to make a very considered effort to decide that I didn't want to be that kind of parent anymore. I didn't want to be that kind of husband anymore. And so I wanted to be Garrett, the dad, Garrett, the husband that my wife deserves when I walk through that door. I don't want to be the cop that's exhausted from the nonsense and and bullshit of the day. So ask yourself, who do I want to be when I walk through the door? That's number six. Number seven, number seven of a ways of the eight ways you can detach after work. So you can reconnect with your family is to uh, plan dinners in advance to reduce decision fatigue and irritation. And then shop early and repeat simple meals frequently. It's it's really, I know this sounds familiar for all of you, right? You get home, you're exhausted, the stench of your vest is still on you, and the conversation happens. What do you want to eat? And then we go into the, I don't care, whatever you want. And then it goes, that goes back and forth and back and forth. And all of a sudden the tension is building and building because the decision's not being made. And you've just spent a day of making hundreds of decisions and you don't want to make another one. And then you snap, right? Or then, or the tent, you know, there's some tension there and it just, it just never works out well, right? Uh, I do a lot of the cooking uh, when I'm, when I'm home and when I get a chance and I enjoy it. It's actually a stress reliever for me, but planning the meals in advance is so helpful because you know what you're going to have. 
you've shopped in advance, you've done the run on your weekend to have meals, you know, the meal stuff ready. And you don't have to have that decision fatigue. You know, you don't have to have those arguments because you already know what you're having for that night. And then it's really helpful actually for meal prep to just make more of something. And then that's your lunch for the next day. But plan those dinners in advance, reduce that decision fatigue, reduce the conflict of what are we going to have tonight? You know, reduce the unhealthy instinct to just order a pizza and, uh, you know, find some simple meals that you like. If you find five simple meals you like, you can rotate those in variations for a month and be just fine and then switch to another five. And it takes a little bit of work on your weekend to like find some stuff, but it's really not that hard and you don't have to be a great chef to do any of that. All right, so that's number seven. Plan dinners in advance and do the shopping early. Number eight, our last one for today on eight ways to detach from work after your shift is to shower after your shift. I know this sounds weird and might be obvious to some too, uh, but that shower does things other than just get that stench of the vest off you that I was talking about, right? When we shower, especially a hot shower, we engage oxytocin, which is a great chemical. That's the that's that good chemical that reduces stress and anxiety. And so when we spend a couple minutes in a hot shower, let that shower hit the back of your neck where all those nerve endings are, and it just activates that parasympathetic nervous system again that you were activating with the breathing. And uh, there's a reason you everyone feels relaxed and calm after a hot shower. So take the chance to get clean, but also take the chance to get calm. And then when you do come in the house, you've had that hot shower, you know, you come home, you decide who kind of person do I want to be? I want to be calm, dad. And you go take a shower and you're calm. It helps you be that person that you want to be. And it's just a couple quick minutes and you just get to rinse off. You, you know, you, you literally have washed the day off of you and you can make that a mental transition into rejoining your family, the people that actually care about you and want to see you survive and want to be with you much longer than your career is going to be. So those are eight ways to detach from work after your shift so that you can reconnect with your family. I'd love to hear your comments on what you do after work. Find me on social media at the squad room, or even just shoot me an email, Garrett at the squadroom.net. Let me know what works for you. And maybe I'll incorporate those into another follow-up episode of this. So we can talk about the ways that we all use the tactics, tips, and strategies we all use to make the most of our lives in this very challenging career. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. If you're new to the show, make sure you check through our catalog of episodes because you're going to find some amazing guests and some amazing actionable ideas that you can take into your day. Also, if you like what you heard today, I want to offer you some extra free resources that we give out. It's our Tactical Tuesday newsletter. Every Tuesday, I bring you a few tactics, tips, and strategies to help you succeed in the week ahead. It may be a book I want to share, gear I found useful, an inspiring quote to think about, or anything else I think you'd like. To sign up for the Tactical Tuesdays email list, you can visit thesquadroom.net forward slash Tactical Tuesdays, or just text your email address and your first name to 805-364-2331. That's 805-364-2331. Those text messages actually come straight to me. It's not some uh, big conglomerate where, where they steal all your information. We won't spam you and we won't sell your information. If you didn't catch the phone number, you can check the show notes for that there. But thank you for being with us today. Please share this episode. Please integrate what you've learned here. Please tag me on social media to let me know what is useful. Tag me with some questions and let's engage in a conversation and let's make this a better career and a better environment and a better world for all of us. Until next time, take care of each other and stay safe.